Hi guys, I hope everyone's doing wonderful today. It is Sunday. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. So I hope everyone is ready. It is upon us. It is finally here. And I just thought I would pop in and color with you guys for a little while and just see how everyone is doing. I went to look at the Christmas lights last night and I have a video to attach to the end of this video for you guys for that. And what I'm going to color in today is Ladies of Nature, the Grayscale Coloring Book. Um, this is Alina Lazareva and this was a Christmas gift from Melinda. Thank you very much. And have you guys seen these beautiful gift bags that Amazon um, puts gifts in? It is, oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. And I thought that we would, here's a little card, it says, Hi Donna, Merry Christmas from Melinda. It's beautiful. And I mean, I just kind of thought I would use it as a little bit of a festive background. But this was an awesome gift. I love it so much. And I've looked through and this, I believe, is my favorite image. If you guys want a quick flip through, how about we do that really quick, just in case anyone else is interested. There is, I believe, 23 illustrations, but you get two of each of these. So that's really nice. And there's some really adorable things here. And this is the grayscale book, and I am just going to be straight coloring with um, some different alcohol markers. And um, I'm still very, 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 very new to grayscale. I've colored maybe four or five, six maybe grayscale images, so still very new. So we'll see how this works out. I don't know if it's going to be anywhere near as easy as the Chibi Girls Grayscale was. Here's the image that I chose. And then we have this one. But we shall see. We'll see how it turns out. And there is two images of each. So I was really nervous about doing one on camera and not being able to have my full attention. Um, and this is where the second set starts. You know, not being able to have my full attention on it, but I thought, you know, hey, there is a second image just in case things go a little crazy. So we shall see. Oh, excuse me. Oh my goodness, I still haven't picked. I don't, yeah, I think I'll be okay. Um, maybe. <laughs> okay. We'll just, we'll just jump right in and see what happens. The Chibi Girls Grayscale was so easy. I mean, it was just amazing how easy that was to go down. These I'm not so sure about. This is just my um, Sans Color Chameleon Color Tones Marker. I really like their, um, I'll zoom this in some. I really like their... Uh, skin tone set and that's actually what I started out with was just the skin tones and I thought I was really going to dig the markers a lot so I ended up investing in the entire set that was my birthday present from Gary um, and I mean they do have some really nice colors but I don't know if I really like the whole two-tone thing. I mean, honestly, I have, you know, touched two tips of markers together. And in my opinion, that's just as good. Um, so, I know a lot of people really like those, but they've just seemed to be kind of, I don't know. It doesn't come out very smooth for me when I do it. And I've been told that it's a um, definitely a learning curve. And maybe I just haven't worked with them enough. I'm not sure. But I need to get those out and try to work with them a little more and see kind of what happens. 
And this is the Sands color. And I do, like I said, I really like their skin tone set. I just used a 40% off coupon at um, Hobby Lobby, I believe, when I bought these. They were a little cheaper at Hobby Lobby than they were at Michael's. So, at least at that time. So, it was, it was actually cheaper to buy them that way. I don't know what I'm going to do about eyeshadow or anything like that. I'm just going to go over this for now and then I'll worry about that in a minute. And Maybe I should have tackled the lower part of the face and then moved to the upper part because now I'm risking my marker drying. And this is the first time that I've, you know, colored anything in this book. So... I don't even know anything about the paper, so this is just a real try it and see situation. So we went last night and looked at the Christmas lights that I had told you guys about in um, Thomaston, Georgia. It's a town probably 40 miles, 45 miles from me maybe. And we drove down there because it's kind of a, a tradition. And we looked at the lights that were all decorated. And there wasn't as many houses decorated this year as there normally is, which really kind of shocked me. But it was fun and we took um, we took Bradley with us, and when we first left, we went to some property that my husband um, has been purchasing for a few years, and our intent originally was, you know, to build a house there maybe, and we really haven't gotten that far to even truly think about that yet, but we went there because he had some things he needed to pick up, and Bradley ran around, and it's, it's almost 17 acres, so Bradley enjoyed that, getting to kind of run around and play there. And then we left from there and went and dropped some Christmas presents off to one of my very close friends for her and her family. And then we went to visit with my parents um, they absolutely love Bradley, so, you know, they were thrilled that he was with us. Um, we went and out to eat as a family with my parents, and then, then Gary and I drove down, and we stopped at a local supermarket that has a, um, Starbucks inside. And I got a gingerbread mocha frappuccino. I had them make that with non-fat milk. Um, and they have these, they have like a candy, a candy section set up. Well, it's got candies and nuts and things like that and all different kinds. And you just get what you want into a bag and you pay by the weight. So I had gotten just a few Jordan almonds and um, some black licorice that was in the shape of Scotty dogs, little terriers, and some Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. So I got those and of course my Starbucks and I went to the car and um, Gary was using the restroom and he he got back out to the car and I immediately, as soon as he sat down, I held everything up and I started singing, these are a few of my favorite things. So he kind of got a kick out of that. And then I just kind of stopped and I was like, whoa, wait, wait. And he's like, what? I said, I haven't heard that song at all this season. And he says, because it's not a Christmas song, Donna. And I was like, what do you mean it's not a Christmas song? He said, that's from The Sound of Music. And I said, but it plays all the time at Christmas. So he insisted is not a Christmas song, that it's just um, the time it was written, the 
area of the world it was written, supposedly written in, um, and everything that it, it was never meant to be about Christmas. But I mean, it talks about sleighs and and things wrapped up with bows and knocks at the you know doorbells and sleigh bells. So I always assumed it was a Christmas song. I mean, what do you guys think? And then. Um, this morning, I went and had breakfast with my parents. And while we were in the little restaurant having breakfast, what comes on the radio? And the only thing they're playing is Christmas music. And what comes on the radio? My favorite things. So, when I went to have... When I went to drop Gary his lunch off, because he's at work. I'm not even on camera. Or on frame here, guys. I'm sorry. So, when I went to drop his lunch off to him I was like you were wrong sea bass and he's like oh let me you know sit down for this one because it doesn't happen often and I told him what had happened and I even read all the lyrics to him and that's when he was telling me all these other things but um, he insists that he was not wrong that this song has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas I always thought it did. I love the song. <coughs> but apparently, it, he says it does not. So, I mean, what do you guys think? You know, maybe you can weigh in on that some. So, I'm really nervous about putting this red down. Don't know what's going to happen here. Um, but anyway, we... We went on from there, and it wasn't dark yet, so he dropped me off at the um, Walmart there in that town, and he has um, some leased hunting property. The lease is about to expire. The company's not renewing the lease. Um, so since he just had some time and it wasn't dark, I walked on the Walmart and he and Bradley went down to that property and Bradley got to run around and enjoy himself there. And he had a lot of fun with that. Um, and then we went and looked at the lights. And then on the way home, we had to stop and use the restroom. We stopped at a Dairy Queen, and I did order some um, chili cheese fries, and we kind of snacked on those a little bit on the way back. And that was our evening. We enjoyed that, and I did make a video of the lights and I will put it at the end of this video for any of you that you know are interested and want to see that like I said there weren't as many lights this year as there normally is and the video is a little blurry it seemed like the lights was really making things kind of blurry on my camera and the there were some houses that had not turned their lights on yet and it seemed as if Maybe those came in. Um, you could actually see those better. Strange. But yeah. So that'll be there at the end of this video. If any of you guys are interested in that. I love Christmas lights at this time of year. So and I know maybe others do also. I'm sure you guys have noticed that a little more colored than there was before. I had to pause the video. My mother-in-law had knocked on the door, and I knew that I would have a serious line if I just stopped and waited, so I went ahead and finished up at least this one little area. Um, she's trying to finish up, you know, the last bit of Christmas shopping that she has to do today because, you know, she was homebound for, oh goodness, over a month after her surgery. And now that she can get out a little bit and do some things, she's trying to play catch up. And we have 
Um, she wanted to make sure that she had the family that came over yesterday. She wanted to make sure that um, she definitely had their Christmas ready for them. Um, so that kind of took priority. And then we have family coming over tomorrow and she wanted to make sure that that was taken care of. Um, it's kind of hard when you live in a family who especially uh, works in public service, you know, like Gary being a paramed paramedic firefighter, and my son is also a paramedic. Um, it's hard because, you know, they work the shift works, shift work, and they all work on different shifts and, um, you know, so they work on different days. My son works A shift, which was yesterday. My husband is B shift, which is today. Um, and of course, they don't get um, um, oh my goodness. They don't get holidays off. That's the word I'm looking for. They, you know, they work through the holidays. And, um, so my son is working Christmas Day. My husband got lucky. He has to work his shift today. So he has Christmas Eve and Christmas off this year. That is a rarity. I think it happens, you know, like once every three years or something like that. But then you throw a leap year in there and it tosses and turns everything upside down. So I'm not sure how these grayscales would do with pencils. I've never tried. Um, I think it would probably do really good, especially if they were, um, I think maybe burnishing, burnishing them in might kind of maybe hide some of the grayscale. I'm not really sure, but I think that doing a light layer and blending it out with like um, the odorless mineral spirits, you know, the Gamsol or something like that would probably be awesome because that kind of gives your uh, markers a um, your markers excuse me it gives your pencils almost like a marker feel you know they look kind of like markers once they're blended out I think that would be nice I think marker looks really pretty on grayscale because you can't you know because it's a lot more translucent um, but like I said, I'm really new to this, so and I don't even know if I'm doing this right. I mean, this is how I did the Chibi Girls. So, we'll see. And this will be, I'm pretty sure, my last video until after Christmas. So... I thought about doing just another Christmas picture, and then I thought, well, no, because I've been dying to color in this book, and you know, you guys know, I said I was doing Christmas pictures, and I did that all of November, and so far all of December, almost, I have broke from it once or twice, um, and it's just, I, I was dying to color out of this one, and there was nothing that was kind of wintry or anything about this book. And I was like, oh, goodness. So I was like, you know what? It was a Christmas gift. So that's Christmas enough, right? I got my Christmas from my parents yesterday. And they've been giving just, um, just money for um, years now. It started more than really when the kids were younger you know they reach a certain age and they're not as into toys anymore and um what was kind of happening is they didn't really know um you know what the kids really wanted you know a lot of the things that the kids would tell them made no sense to them whatsoever and they were getting to the point where they would like ask me, you know, what is this that they're talking about? And I would try to, you know, describe it. And they would be like, it, you know, they 
wouldn't have a clue. So one year they just kind of said, okay, well, we're just going to give them cash and they can go get what they want. So ever since then, they've kind of just given money. And yeah, that's fine. I don't know a person in the world that doesn't like money, right? Um, you know, at least as like a gift. I know I enjoy getting money as gifts because you can, you know, kind of do whatever you want with it. But it's also kind of nice to have things to open to, I guess. But, you know, I was perfectly happy. I was thrilled. I went this morning. I had to go out and get some um, cough, some decaf coffee because I love coffee, especially after like a meal. But I cannot take in caffeine after a certain time of day. Otherwise, I will not be able to sleep at all. So I noticed that the decaf coffee was getting a little bit low. So I wanted to go out and get that taken care of before, you know, I didn't want to risk running out because I, I don't like to go to stores much, you know, during the Christmas season anyway. Pretty much right after, right about Thanksgiving, if I go to a store, I am going really early in the morning or really late at night and I am not a really late at night person anymore. I used to be. I'm really not anymore. Um, I found that if I have too much stimulation late in the evenings, that insomnia kicks in. And then, you know, I'm done for the night. So, when I realized that, I was like, let me go ahead and go out this morning. I left here at like 8.30 this morning. Um, I just went and had a quick breakfast with my parents before they went to church and um, then I went and braved Walmart to get that coffee and when I got to Walmart it wasn't that bad and you know, I got my shopping cart and I did some shopping in the store and by the time I got back around towards um, the front of the store the lines were backed up halfway through the store. When I left, there were no shopping carts for anyone to get. So, I mean, I just kind of handed off my shopping cart to people who were waiting. It was nuts. And I was like, no, that's it. I'm done. And um, after I left there, I went to Dollar General because Dollar General sells Amazon gift cards so I went there and got my I used the money that my parents had given me for Christmas and I turned them into Amazon gift cards so you know we all love Amazon that's what I did this morning just did that and then I picked up some lunch because by that time by the time I just did that little bit right there it was lunch time so I picked up lunch and took it to my husband. I was not hungry because I had had a biscuit. Um, we had just, they go to McDonald's in the mornings before they go to church and have breakfast. So I had met them. I just had an egg biscuit. Well, it's egg and cheese biscuit. So I really wasn't hungry at lunchtime. But I needed to get something taken over to my husband. So I did that. And then, um, yeah, I came home. I was done and my mother-in-law you know she's out now trying to do these things and I feel really sorry for her because I know how bad it is out there and she has got to go to a side of town where it is horribly crowded I think she has a lot more patience than I do though she, when she goes in a store she's generally in a store for an hour two hours um, honestly it's probably getting close to three o'clock and she left here at like one and all she did was went to one little store close by the house to pick up a few things and she grabbed her a bite to eat for lunch and she just got back to drop those things off and um, she's headed back out to another um, town that's close by that has, you know, much more 
a lot more shopping options and it's where she needs to get the rest of the things that she needs to pick up. Oh so, yeah. It's crazy out there. But I wanted to get that coffee because I don't like to be in stores this time of year much anyway. And just because Christmas gets here, it's not going to make it any better because um, you'll have everybody doing returns. And, you know, that's going to go on until probably the first week of January is over. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the coffee so I wouldn't have to go back out and get that. This is going to have some lines in it. This is such a large area. I definitely don't want to try to use the chisel end of the marker because of having to go, you know, around these little areas of the flowers. So there's going to be some lines, but it'll be okay. I really hope everyone has all of their shopping done if they need to get it. If not, I encourage you to go extremely early in the morning. I've seen that some stores are going to stay open 24 hours from here on out. I think Kohl's is going to be 24. rest of the way until Christmas. That's crazy. And of course, Walmart's 24 hours. Here, all of our Walmarts are 24 hours. So, that would be an idea. If you could go late at night, that might be better. I don't know. Some of you guys may tell me, oh, yeah, no, that's not the case. Their stores are just as crowded now. So I had kind of asked you guys what kind of things you'd like me to talk about when I do color and chats. And um, I really didn't get a whole lot of suggestions. I was asked about just, you know, my day-to-day -day life, especially here in the United States, because um, the person who was asking is actually from the UK. Um, so I'll share some of that. I'm out of the frame again. Um... Sorry. You know, I'll share some of that in future videos. And they had asked um, also, you know, why I started coloring. I'll definitely talk about that. And I kind of thought about maybe doing that as almost like a Christmas thing. Yeah, you know, like a Christmas gift for you guys. Just kind of led you into my personal life. But then I thought, I mean, I'm going to be honest. It's not going to be... <sighs> There's some pretty unhappy things. Um, that surrounds that. So it might be something that's better left for after Christmas. I mean, I don't want to be responsible for depressing anyone or anything this close to Christmas, but it has been truly um, personal tragedy that brought me into adult coloring. But we'll talk about that in a video. And I'm okay to talk about it. It's I'm, I'm fine. I just didn't think that that was maybe something that needed to be talked about right at Christmas. Um, and it's actually probably good for me to be able to talk about it. Especially doing a color and chat. Because I can maybe work some things out in my own mind. Um, while I talk to you guys about it. Those, that video will definitely be a pop yourself some popcorn, um, pick your favorite beverage, <laughs> alcohol is included in possibilities for that video. Um, but yeah, we'll do that. And um, please, if you have any 
other things that you might want me to talk about, anyone, um, comments, please let me know, because when I start making these videos, I want, you know, to maybe have a list of things that you guys are interested in. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So, my mother-in-law decided that she's not going back out today. She's going to wait and go in the morning. So, we shall see. Maybe if she leaves early enough in the morning, it'll be okay. I don't know. I don't envy the idea. But... And there is some... Um, personal things going on right now that I could probably talk to you guys some about. It might um, it might actually be good for me to be able to blow off a little bit of steam here. I had had one subscriber who told me that she really appreciated that I was real and that I had, um, how did she put it? That I Basically, she was saying that I'm real, that I have problems just like everybody else and I'm not afraid to show them. I don't um, seem to have life by the horns. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't even have life by the tail. I mean, that's... Yeah, no. I don't even have it by the tail. So. Lots of things coming up in the new year. That. Will be interesting, to say the least. In my life. I just kind of wanted to get the red down that I was putting down. I mean, maybe I can do her lips red too. And I noticed I completely missed a little part of her skin. To me, when I'm doing grayscale, it almost looks really bad when you're putting it down until you get a lot more of it down and then it all kind of starts to look nice and blend in together really well. So, we'll see. And I picked out just a it's a warm gray six and I was going to lay this down first over these. I didn't want to go with a super dark black because I was afraid, you know, you wouldn't be able to see any of the shading that she had done. And I'm afraid I may encounter this even with a six, but I thought I could always go darker, but you can't go lighter. Maybe I should have laid the warm gray five down first. I don't know. We'll see. Here in just a minute, I'm going to do one of these and just let it kind of sit there for a second. And this is habit. Does anybody else do this? I have no idea why when I color something in, I immediately want to flick, flick. See, I can't really tell if the grayscale is really coming through good on that or not. And you know what? I think I may have colored that in while I was talking. No, it's right there. So I thought I had colored it maybe when I was talking to my mother-in-law and paused the video. But I didn't. I think I'm seeing some of that grayscale pop through and I think really if I went any lighter with the others that it would make this one look bad. So, you know, I'll just go ahead and go in with this one regardless of what happens with that. I was so nervous to try to do this picture on video. So nervous. Well, you know, I'm always trying to look for things that doesn't have a whole lot of detail um, when I do the videos because I'm trying to get used to, you know, thinking about something other than the coloring. Um, so I've been 
looking for things with not a lot of detail. And I mean, this isn't overly detailed, but the idea that it's something that I'm not truly comfortable with is daunting. And it was just a little nerve-wracking to think about doing this on camera for the first time. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, if this would have been a live stream, I'm not convinced that I would have because, you know, the thought always kind of crosses your mind. You know, when you're making these type of videos, well, if everything goes completely sideways, I can always not upload that video and start all over. And I have not done that as of yet, so don't think, oh, I wonder how many videos. <laughs> nope. As of today, I have never just said no way. The videos I've recorded have went up, even the ones that I wish didn't have to go up. Because there has been a few that, you know, it didn't get into landscape the way it needed to. But I went ahead and uploaded them anyway, because my thought on that was, oh my goodness, I spent all this time... Like maybe, I know with me, I color while I listen to color and chats. And I was like, yeah, you know, people who are coloring, listening to the coloring chats are probably not going to mind that this is in portrait mode. So I went ahead and uploaded that anyway. I like this. This is very nice. And of course, she's got like this little hat here. And I'm very nervous about putting this warm gray six. I guess I need to bring you guys back into frame. I'm nervous about putting the warm gray six here in this hat. Um, because I saw how dark it was down here on her body. I think I'll try to go in with a warm gray five maybe. Because I had pulled it out and then just kind of see how that works. And then kind of go from there. And I want to assume that this is also part of the hat. I hope I'm correct. Hopefully this one will show some of that grayscale through it. I was just really afraid that that six would not because I was having a hard time seeing it on the other. And, you know, that's one thing I always try to remember when I'm coloring is that it's, if you let, even your alcohol markers, if you will let them completely dry, and I mean completely dry, um, you can kind of, you know, even if you just go back over with, um, even if you go back over with when it's wet, you can, you know, darken up the color, but you can, you can oversaturate with marker especially when you're dealing with the thinner papers. But if you let it completely dry, it seems to take another coat better, at least in my opinion. And so if I get the feeling that I've went way too dark on something, that's generally when I go back and try to make that correction. I'll let it dry and then just go back over it with like a shade darker. And it works out pretty well most of the time. Should I do these out? Um, and I'm using terracotta as a hair color. I could not decide what to use. And this is the Artify terracotta. Um, and I looked through several um, to try to figure this and I thought that maybe um, I think I just missed her hair there that maybe this would look okay um, against the red yeah I see I thought that was still hair and it was not so I made a oopsie there Of course, these bleed some on this paper, so I'm having to deal with that. 
also. And that's kind of why I was why I was so nervous. Because when I am just coloring on my own, I am sometimes I will sit and just barely, barely stroke at paper to make sure I don't get that bleed. And I can't I could do that I guess here, but I wouldn't be able to talk much because it takes a lot of concentration for me to to do that. Close that in, and it'll be okay. I keep getting out of frame, you guys. I'm sorry. I want to keep it so you guys can see, and then I'm trying to concentrate, and I'm not. I guess, paying as close attention as I should. And I'm really not sure where it has like little dots and things like that. And even like going over this little veil, I'm never sure how to do that with grayscale. And I mean, I guess you would do it just like any other, I'm not sure. Do you guys worry <laughs> sometimes with your pictures, you just worry over them? You know, I have a lot of issues with anxiety anyway. And so, it's almost like I'm a natural born worrier, I guess would be one way to put it. And I'm really trying to get to the point that I remind myself that at the end of the day, it is just a coloring book. And no one is going to be hurt um, other than maybe my feelings if something doesn't go you know exactly right because I have coloring books I've not colored in because I was just too intimidated by the images and I thought they were absolutely beautiful but I hadn't colored in the books I was just intimidated so coming into 2019, that's what I'm going to try um, to keep in mind is that I am coloring for enjoyment. I am coloring for relaxation. I am coloring for anxiety relief. I am coloring for so many other reasons and that stressing myself out defeats the purpose that I'm coloring and if I want you know obviously some of these books that I purchased I loved them or I would not have purchased them and I want to color in them and I'm just going to dive in and I'm just gonna to try to have fun with them and if I mess them up it's just a coloring book at the end of the day and hopefully I will have a blast doing it When I'm doing hair with alcohol markers, I will generally try to do, I'll stay within the hairlines and I'll kind of let the lines in the hair be my safeguard against like streak lines in case the ink dries too fast kind of thing. That they're there to kind of blend that in better. So I'll do my hair in like patches and I look for those areas where, you know, that would be easy to do that. And I just kind of work at it like that until I finish up an entire head of hair. I am just not good at all with um, the chisels. I need to work on that some more. So 
know, I definitely just don't feel comfortable and just, you know, pull it out with chisel and going at it, filling, especially if I've got to go around little areas or things like that. I'll probably stay up tonight and color probably rather late and catch up on some color tube uh, Friday and Saturday I did not color at all uh, either day so kind of missing that we're right here at Christmas and I've got these Christmas books so I'll kind of probably dive into those <laughs> this evening and just color my heart out until I am so tired I can't keep my eyes open and then I'll go to sleep maybe that's always an assumption when you suffer from um, if you have chronic illnesses uh, and things like that sleep is not always a guarantee and sometimes you're sometimes it's almost like you're taking a roll of the dice staying up late even because I know there's times I've stayed up late thinking I would get extremely tired and it would be easier you know for me to go to sleep and instead for whatever reason staying up that late wired me does that ever happen to you guys where you get to the point that I guess it's that whole you know second wind but in my case it would be like the fifth or sixth wind um, and then you can't sleep at all there was one night I stayed up and I was swatching. I had been working on color swatches, getting everything swatched out really, you know, the way I wanted it in a book. And I stayed up until, oh my goodness, it was probably four o'clock in the morning, I guess, when I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, I'm really tired. I'm going to bed. So I got everything put up and curled up and everything and I was yawning and yawning and yawning. I was exhausted. But guess what couldn't happen? It was almost like I had gotten too tired to sleep. So it's kind of a roll of the dice. And I definitely won't stay up that late tonight, but the night that I did that, my husband was at work that night. And I fell asleep probably the last time I looked at the clock. It was a little before, it was after 6, but I don't think it was 6.30 yet. Um, he gets off work at 7. So he comes in and immediately wanted to wake me up and say happy morning, yoga morning and all this. No. I was like, dude, I've been asleep like an hour. Leave me alone. So I haven't tried to do anything quite that crazy again, but yeah, I'll stay up kind of late, about one o'clock probably, um, is my absolute, I really need to be in bed by then. It takes me on a good night, maybe 30 minutes to an hour to go to sleep. And you notice I said a good night. So... I'm liking this. I think the more I work with, you know, grayscale, the better it'll get. And I have, uh, of course, another copy in the book of this image. So I can come back to it later and work on it again and see how, you know, it improves. I really like having more images in a coloring book, but I definitely see the benefit of having two of each one. her hair. Oh, 
come on, work with me here. <laughs> so what do you guys think so far? I'm going to go in and do her little antennae and then her pearls. Okay, guys, give me one minute. I'm going to pause the video, and I promise you will not even miss me. And that's all there was to it. See, you did not even notice I was gone. How awesome is that? And I took myself a little bit of a break and just relaxed for, relaxed for a second. My legs were kind of starting to go numb from sitting. This is a rose red. I'm going to do, I think, the flowers this color. Um, I'm hoping that it is enough of a difference between... I really debated whether or not, and maybe I should go in with a pink, maybe, against these, um, just to make sure. And then I could always do the rose red on um, everything else. Um, on the rose, like I said, on the roses still. Let's see. I think I might do that just to be on the safe well, a safer side. Um, let me see. I thank you guys for that wonderful idea. Maybe this will look better. How many of you have this book or any of Alina's works? And what do you think of them? I have had her 100 best grayscales in my wish list for a little while. I am thinking about placing that purchase, um, maybe with making that purchase, maybe with some of my um, Christmas money. Do you guys recommend it? What do you think um, if you have that book? Is there any of her other books that you think I should be looking at? I will watch um, different color tube channels, book hauls, um, color and chats, you know, things like that. And I'll see books there and I will grab them and put them over in my wish list. And then when I have, um, a little bit of money that I can buy a book or maybe two with I um, will go and do like I'll look for full flip throughs on YouTube and things like that um, to uh, you know decide 100% sure if that's the book I want at the time you guys can probably hear a saw going in the background there's some planes flying over I opened up the back door just to get a little bit of fresh air. It was super cold last night, or it seemed to be, but then it warmed up pretty warm today for it to be just, what, two days before Christmas, two, three days. Uh, but I wanted to get a little bit of air. It seemed kind of stuffy. I'm trying to film a little earlier in the days so I can try to render them um, and have them at least uploading to YouTube by the time I go to bed. That way, at least at some point during the evening, the video is up for you guys instead of having to um, wait like until the next morning to try to get that taken care of. Yeah, that looks really nice. I like that. It's very pretty, and you know, I may actually just, I don't know if, I may actually just want to do the flowers that color too. I'll think on that. And I apologize here, I'm having to move things around my... Um, the gooseneck uh, phone holder that I use for recording. I've had to move it fairly close to me to um, 
be able to get a good angle so it's awkward for me to color at this angle then I can't get the book down low enough to get you know just a straight shot so I had to move it a little bit and right now what I'm using is I just went to an ultra fine line point on my art minds um, marker it has a fine it will ultra fine point on one end and a fine point on the other these are permanent alcohol markers it is arts art a r t mines m i n d s i picked these up at michaels i believe it might be a michaels brand because i haven't seen them um, in other stores i've noticed you may i have not looked but you may be able to find these on amazon if you don't have a michaels um, because I've noticed that some of Michael's things are available on Amazon, some of their store brands. So it could be there, but I needed that ultra fine point. There was no way I was going to be able to go in here with um, my other marker. It just would not have, have worked out very well like that. And I'll be using that also on um, the leaves and things, well, maybe not necessarily the leaves, but on the stems for sure on these also um, and I'll let that dry for a minute and see if I wanted that to be any darker than it actually was but for right now I think that's okay and like I said I'll be doing it also on all of these little stems because the nibs on the alcohol markers are just, they're too big. This is just old, this is ultra fine here. Um, I do like the Arts Mines. In my opinion, they're they are good. I mean, they're just as good, I think, as maybe a Sharpie or a Bic. But what I really like about them is that they have the ultra fine on one end and the fine on the other. Where um, I don't think the Sharpies or the Bics come that way. So, it's kind of like getting two markers in one. So, I would recommend those. They don't come in as many colors, I don't believe, as the Sharpies or the Bics. And I think Bic has, I think the Bic markings has more color even than the Sharpie brand. I could be wrong. It's everybody, you know, take note I said that. Don't ever tell Gary. I hope he doesn't see this video. I've never, I don't think I've ever admitted to being wrong to him. Of course, he's never really admitted being wrong to me either, so. I mean, come on, let's face it. Nobody wants to be wrong. I like having a full set of Bix and a full set of Sharpie um, because the Bic colors are different from the Sharpie colors and that was kind of why I bought these Arts Minds also because I've noticed that when you switch brands you can have a Carmine in one brand and a Carmine in the other brand but yet they are two totally different colors. So, and that's kind of why I have um, different sets of my budget-friendly alcohol markers also is because I can get, you know, a lot more color that way. having a really hard time believing that 2018 is like a week from being over. It really seems like it just got started, you know, well. Um, this year went by just so fast, so, so fast.
And I've noticed that the older I get, the faster time passes. You know, when I was a child, it seemed like eternity for Christmas to ever, you know, get there. It seemed like years. What the amount of time it takes for like one year to pass now, that, you know, it's insane. It's just crazy how fast it happens now. You know, when I was a kid, a school week would start and it would seem like it would take forever, ever, ever to get to Friday. And now it seems like a week starts and the next thing I know, it is Friday. So. So I guess it all comes down to, I mean, it's relative. Time is very, very relative. <coughs> Time is truly not a constant. What may be five minutes for me may be ten years for you, you know. I mean, obviously not that big of a difference, but it's, it's definitely different depending on how you perceive things. You know, if you're doing something that you really enjoy, that you, you know, that brings you happiness or peace or anything like that, you know, time goes by very quickly and then it's over and gone. Whereas, um, if you are, you know, doing something that you don't enjoy, that you find very boring or strenuous or stressful, it seems like it takes that time so much longer to pass. And I think it gets that way as you get older. I mean, I hate to say this, but the closer we get to the grave, the faster those second, those minutes and second hands go on the clock. So, you know, you just have to truly embrace every day and, you know, enjoy what you're doing. And that's kind of, you know, something that I've been working on really hard within myself um, is knowing that, you know, I've had some really hard realizations to come to in the past few years. And time is not something that we are promised or guaranteed and you need to make the absolute most out of what you have because you never know when that's going to be gone so you know you need to you know love those you love and love hard and do things that you enjoy and don't let life in general stress you out especially not to the point that you're not capable of enjoying things because believe me when our time runs out and our clock you know is up it's um the world's going to keep going all these things that stress you out are going to be stressing people out for many many years to come learn to just blow them off do what you have to do, you know, responsibility-wise, of course. We'll let everything else go. Um, because life is just so short. And I'm not trying to get all kinds of philosophical, but, you know, that's just something that I've started realizing as I've gotten older. I am... 43. I will be 44 in September. But, um, and it seemed like, you know, when I was young, it took forever to get to 13, and then to 16, and then to 18. <laughs> and um, it seems like yesterday I was 30. It just, it's gone so fast. And I think I realized last year at some point that 
the chances the chances were good that I had lived more than half my life and that's that's scary it's, you know it's a scary realization to come to you when you know that chances are you have less days ahead of you than you have behind you I guess that's really not something we need to be talking about right before Christmas either, huh? My hands were cramping so bad when I woke up this morning in my knuckle here. Oh, it was horrible. And the crazy thing is I had not been writing or coloring or anything like that. I'm not sure what caused that to happen. You know, generally that's what my hands feel like after I've you know spent like a whole day coloring, especially if I've used pencils or pens. And not marker, but I tend to death grip even my markers sometimes. And it's that death grip that causes that, you know, pain, I think. But I don't know what was up with that this morning. And to whomever had said that they enjoyed their Corinor and their Arteza woodless pencils thank you for enabling me you know I had bought the 12 set of the Corinors and after you know kind of swatching them out and you know I kind of just like to use pencils for shading of a marker I got thinking about it and I was like wow you know these would last so much longer than trying to do all the shading and stuff and wasting my prisms and having to sharpen my prisms because I shaded with them and you know, things like that. So I went ahead and I bought the full set. I'm assuming it's the full set. It's the 24 of the Corinor wood pencils. And I bought the 24 set, which appeared to be the full set, of the Arteza um, woodless pencils. And, you know, so I did sort of kind of lie a little bit. I did swatch maybe seven or eight of those pencils yesterday and I swatched the rest out this morning but that was the point that I realized that my hand hurt was when I went to swatch those, the rest of those out this morning so there's still not much of an explanation for why it was feeling that way You know, I just remembered what one thing I did do. I did this not yesterday, but day before yesterday. I did just like write Merry Christmas and Happiest of New Year's on some cards that were going into Christmas gifts. And I mean, maybe, maybe that little bit did aggravate my hand somewhat. I really do like the way this is turning out. It's very pretty. You know, I never thought I would be one to like grayscale. When I first heard of grayscale, I kind of looked it up and I was like, ugh, I don't like that at all. I wouldn't want to do that. I would not enjoy that. But I am enjoying most of the grayscale that I've done right during my holiday coloring. I also had obtained um, a Bennett Klein book in a trade, maybe two Bennett Klein books, and I thought they were very pretty. I liked them a lot, and I, um, you know, put some more Bennett Kleins like in my wish list and stuff like that. But I hadn't purchased them yet, but I haven't done anything in the Bennett Klein yet. I hope the Bennett Kleins are enjoyable. Also, I know I have heard some people say that some 
um, Grayscale is just better than others. I think what I'm enjoying with Grayscale is work that people has actually done themselves. What I still do not think I would enjoy is where pictures have been taken, like um, realistic, real-life pictures, and then turned into grayscale. I don't think I would enjoy that. I still hold firm that I don't, um, I don't have a desire for those type of books. But I mean, who knows? <laughs> Things could change. My taste in coloring has changed just so much just over the couple years that I've been coloring. The first coloring, adult coloring book that I purchased was just after Christmas in 2015. I had used Christmas money from my parents and I had bought a couple of adult coloring books at a bookstore and some um, Sharpies. And that's where it started. But it hasn't been until this year that I even owned any colored pencils. So that's a very new medium to me. And when I say this year, we're talking August maybe September was when, maybe August, was when my first um, colored pencils purchase was made. So they are still a very, very new medium. And hopefully the more I work with those, the better that will get and the more comfortable I'll be with them. I was always just all about marker, 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 marker. And I was using just Sharpies. I had Sharpies, the big markets. I did have these art mines. Um, and that was all that I used. And I had colored with some gel pens. That was all I had used up until July, I believe. In July of this past year was when I purchased my set of Bienio, um Maybe it could have been June, but my Bianyo alcohol markers, and that was the first experience I had with anything that was not Sharpie or Bic or like the Arts Minds, you know, things like that. Um, it was also during that time up around my birthday when I started just kind of messing around with maybe like um, uh, soft pastels or gelatos. So most of these mediums are still very new to me too. And that's why when I tell you guys we can do a lot of learning together, that's exactly what I mean. Because as I pick up little tricks and things, I'll share them with you guys because that always seems to happen. When, you're, when you start with something new, somewhere along the way, you kind of start to, you know, pick up things that works for you. It may not be exactly how other people do it. And I think it's really neat. I love it when other people share um, their little tips on things that work for them. Because, you know, they might work for me. You know, it's like with the colored pencils. I'm going to tell you right now, this layer after layer after layer, that's, that won't work for me will not work for me. I am too heavy-handed and I like, I'm not going to say instant gratification because even with markers it takes some time. I mean we've been here for over an hour working at this. So they do take time but are a lot faster than all these crazy layers <laughs> and I couldn't do them and I think my hands too heavy anyway you know I've tried the holding the pen or pencil way back here and it seems like I still somehow manage to put a lot of pressure on that 
For those of you who have ever worked with woodless pencils, I'll tell you just how heavy-handed I am without even realizing it. I was um, doing some shading in, adding some pencil on top of some marker with one of the 12-count Coronor that I had gotten and snapped it right in half. <laughs> just in my hand. I'm just coloring along the whole thing to snap. And yeah, they're woodless, but they do have lacquer on them which is supposed to, I guess, make them stronger and also, um, you know, kind of keep the pigment from getting all over everything. Um, and it just snapped. So now I know that I have to be a lot more careful when I'm using those. And that was definitely nice to know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm glad to have had the experience, you know, experience, and then I wanted, you know, to get the 24 count anyway, and I just sharpened up both ends of the one that broke, and, you know, it's all good, but yeah, I'm very heavy-handed, a lot of times I have to, you know, kind of remind myself to relax my hands some, Was this part of, I think this was part of the actual ladybug. I'm going to have to go back with red there. Am I in frame? Yeah. So how many of you color grayscale um, and how many of you have never colored grayscale? And if you have, do you enjoy it? And if so, why? And if you have not, or if you do and you do, you know, you have tried it and you didn't like it, why did you not like it? And if you have any suggestions of artists or specific books that you think I might enjoy, you know, you guys that have been with me for a little, for, you know, a few minutes have um, an idea of the kinds of things that I like to color. So, I mean, what do you think I might enjoy? I really want to finish this on camera, but I really don't want this video to be super duper long either. I guess there's not a whole lot left to do. I mean, we need to do the flowers and I need to do her eyes. Um, I'll probably use pencil to just kind of shade in her eyebrows a little bit. And um, I'll probably use maybe a, 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 probably a pen to go around where maybe mascara would be. And this is the Artify marker. And um, they seem to be, they look almost identical to the um, Shuttle Art. They tend to be a lot juicier. I mean, I and I don't know if that's in a good way or not because they they tend to bleed more. I think I'm able to control the shuttle art a little better, so I'm having to be a little more careful with my strokes with this particular one because I know how they tend to spread out. And I have my, I have a problem with my colorets for the same reason. I rarely rarely use my colorets. Um, I don't have any of the actual um, colorit books. And I mean, maybe on their paper it might be better. I did get like a free 10 count sample 
coloring pages from them um, several months back, and I think the markers seem to do a little better on that. But I don't, um, on light paper like this, like the Amazon's type papers and things, they are just, they just spread out and bleed way too bad. And that's kind of what these remind me of. And actually, the color it markers are very similar in look to these. Um, they like have the same barrels and all of that. And I think I don't think the color it's refillable, but I think they do sell individual markers through color it's. And that's kind of where I'm at with the colorettes and also with my chameleons. I know they can be refilled. The colors that I really don't have in any of the other sets that I get that I really like, I'll probably get replacement markers or refills for those, but probably not to keep all of them refilled. I think the time will come when I am just combining all of my alcohol markers into um, some type of storage and using them that way. And I'm not sure how I will have swatches because I heavily rely on swatches. Um, I mean heavily. What I was just coloring with the Bix and the Sharpies and things like that. I pretty much knew what color um, any of my markers were going to lay down, and that was that was pretty sweet. It really was, because um, I kind of had them memorized what colors they were, but now I have so many different brands and different markers, and I have to look at swatches to keep those all straight in my mind. I'm not sure how I will keep up with all that when the time comes to um, do that because I just don't think that every time I start to run out of a couple colors that I'll be able to afford to buy uh, a new set of that particular marker I am definitely enjoying having all the color choices you know while I do have the color choices And I have just, you know, I try to color between my different sets frequently. You know, going maybe I'll color a page or two with one particular um, brand and marker. And then I will switch over for the next couple of things that I color to a different brand of marker. And, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to test all these different. And I have things that I like and dislike about each and every set. And I feel like, almost kind of like Pokemon, it's like, gotta have them all, Pokemon. So I don't know. I'd like to be able to settle and say, oh, this is the one I 100% like all the time for all circumstances. <laughs> so I never want a different one. Maybe I just shouldn't have tried all the different brands and I wouldn't know what I was missing. Of course I would, because as soon as I started watching Color Tube, I would know, and I think that's about the time that I started buying up different types of markers. got us into a little bit of a financial debungle with all of that. I thought that I was using mostly like gift cards for my birthday and things like that. And I ended up overspending. Things were getting charged on my card, like my Amazon store card, credit cards, whatever. I didn't really, honestly, I didn't pay that close of attention. And those bills started coming in and we really noticed it. We really noticed it. Um, October, I guess, is when my husband was like, do you realize how much money you spent 
And I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So. Yeah. We're having to kind of work to fix that financial debungle that I caused. Which I feel so bad about. I really do. So I'm going to have to be very cautious about what I actually buy um, over the next several months. And it's going to be so depressing because there's things you know that I want that I've had my wish, wish list for a while. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to do it this way and that way and this way and this way until I get all this. And yeah, so. Going to have to restrain myself for a bit. Maybe I should cancel my Amazon Prime. I mean, that may actually help me. Because <laughs> if I'm not getting free shipping, <laughs> I will not be as, as tempted. When I didn't have Amazon Prime, and, you know, I had to spend the $25 or whatever, or $35. Is it 35 on some things? Or maybe it is still 25 I don't know. But when I had to spend, like, the $25 to get the free shipping... I didn't purchase as much on Amazon. So I'm telling you, Amazon has got to be making a killing, super killing, off of Amazon Prime. Because I really believe that if you have that Prime membership, you're going to shop on Amazon more. I mean, more than you normally would have. And I only do the month, you know, the month to month Amazon Prime. I haven't paid for like a full year. You guys have Amazon Prime? And if you do, do you feel like you shop more since you got the Amazon Prime? And I mean, be be real with yourself when you ask yourself that question. You know, are you, have you done more shopping on Amazon since you got Amazon Prime? Because I think we're more cautious if you know, if something's going to cost you $25, you might think a minute before you hit the place order button, but if something costs $3.99, it is so easy, and you're getting that free shipping, it is so easy to hit that order button, and then what you don't think about is if it's so easy a few times a month before you know it, where you would have spent the $25 to have gotten the free shipping and just kind of waited until you needed $25 worth of things off of Amazon, those little $3.99, $4.99 purchases just equaled 50 bucks, and you spent double what you would have spent otherwise. Because let's face it, there are things that we buy that we would not have bought if they hadn't have been, oh, they're $3.99 and I can get free shipping. I don't know. Amazon Prime might be one thing that has to go in the new year. We will see if I can reel this in a little bit. You guys hear those dogs barking off in the distance? A neighbor that lives way back behind us um, has a kennel back there, and I believe those are hunting dogs. One starts and they all start, and this will go on sometimes for a long time. I feel sorry for the people that live closer to him than I do. You know, when I close up my windows and my doors, I don't hear that. But, you know, if you were living really close, you would definitely hear it. And I think he actually lives in a subdivision that is right behind us. 
I mean, we live in a subdivision also, and I think he lives in the subdivision behind us. I don't think. We do live in a, in a rural-type area back here. You know, there are there are many more houses that are on single lots um, than there are subdivisions in this area of our county. But I'm pretty sure this particular guy is in a subdivision. And, you know, we're not within the city limits, so, you know, there's not regulations on a lot of things. Our county has some regulations that's just countywide, you know, unless you live in a area that is zoned a certain way, you can't have certain things. Like, where I live, even though we're not in the city limits, we cannot have, like, we cannot have chickens or anything like that. Um... So, I mean, even someone close by here that lives on a single lot and they may have several acres, they can't have chickens either because of the way this particular area is zoned. But the county doesn't have anything about, like, dog kennels, per se. You know, having a kennel for your dogs, like hunting dogs or whatever. The city does have things in place about things like that, but the county doesn't. So I just, I do, I feel really bad for anyone who lives in that subdivision extremely close to him when those dogs get to going. And I love dogs. I, I love them to death, but Bradley will tell you when he starts yap, 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 and mommy gets mad. She will tell him to hush his mouth real fast. I cannot do the yipping dog thing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Goodness. Can you hear him? Can you guys hear that? <laughs> they are going like crazy back there right now. My throat is getting really scratchy. I may have to get a hard piece of candy. <coughs> Excuse me. I am just not over this. I am having such a hard time with my allergies. and Oh, that was kind of gross. And since I had gotten sick, I've never really had the problems with allergies. But this year has been an exception. I may have to speak to my doctor about getting on some type of an allergy medication. But a lot of medications that are for colds or allergies and things like that, they make me feel like my head's not attached to my body. And I just feel really like rumdum. And um, I don't like to take it. So I don't know what I'm going to do. It might take a while to find one that'll work for me. And I have a, um, a heart arrhythmia, so I can't take anything that's too stimulating either. Or it'll send my heart off doing crazy things. I get the palpitations and you know things like that.
Tell you what, guys, getting old is not for sissies. It's not. still here guys here we go sorry this is just called a fresh yellow I think it's it'll look a little better than pastel maybe inside these little flowers Squeak, squeak, squeak. happened to reach in to my prisoners and was able to locate terracotta without a problem. Just kind of do her eyebrow a little bit so it matches her, um, you know, her hair better. I didn't, I really didn't want to take a marker to try to outline those eyebrows. I don't know how this is going to look, but I'm going to try. This is just the pen that came with my um, Touch New. It's the 0.5 millimeter liner. It came with a set of Touch News. And I'm just going, I am going to turn this a little bit. I'm just going to kind of lightly maybe go around. I mean, I don't even know. I may regret doing this, you know? I really don't see eyelashes. And I'm sure there's some there, but I don't see them. I don't know. Was that a no-no? What do you guys think? <laughs> um, so, what do you guys think? That's nothing more than just throwing markers down. I just used the pencils to do her eyes right there just a little bit. Well, her eyebrows, everything else is just marker directly straight down on the paper. And that's that. That one is done. I think she's beautiful. I'm happy with her. Um, I think it turned out nice. It'll be fun to play more in this book. I really enjoyed it. And um, that's going to be it for this color in chat 
but it is almost Christmas and I will probably not be back with another video until after um, Christmas. It may be a few days. Uh, my husband is working on Sunday, so I will probably have a video up either Sunday night or Monday for you guys. Um, just to kind of say hi and see how you're all doing and all of that. Maybe color with you guys for a little bit. But I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for making the last um, month or so of my life since I've started the YouTube channel. Um, just great. It's been, it's been wonderful. It's been fun. I've enjoyed your comments and I have been humbled by um, the gifts that have been sent to me by um, some of you and it just has been a wonderful humbling experience and I thank you and I hope that I can give back to you guys in the coming year hopefully with um, lots of just just giveaways and um, good times and laughs and conversation and you know whatever it is that I can I can do to help you guys out in your lives and I will probably maybe do some talking about myself video maybe on Sunday um, so all of you guys can get a look better um, into me and I like I said I have the uh, Christmas lights video that's going to be coming up right after this video it will be, it will should just go right in to that, so enjoy that. Let me know things that you may want me to talk about in my color and chats. And just, um, yeah, have a Merry Christmas. And uh, I hope that it is peaceful and happy and that you are surrounded by those that you love. And if you find yourself alone, I hope that you will join some of us on color tube and not feel alone i hope that you at least feel that you are surrounded by friends and love this holiday season and i love you all merry christmas and i will see you guys in the next video stay tuned for the christmas lights and until next time guys peace love and happy coloring bye guys Hi guys, I'm here at Christmas Lane and I promised we would do a drive-through with Christmas lights. So what I will do is the houses, if we get to an area where things are not very lit up, I'll just pause the video. So if you notice some pauses, um, that's why. And I've got Bradley with me, he's in my lap, so if the phone kind of jerks, you'll know that's why also. So I hope you guys are having a great week weekend and we'll have a very Merry Christmas and come in here and say hello Gary. Here's Gary everybody. Hi. Say something more than hi. No. Oh, hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. I gotta flip this around. Hold on guys. <laughs> How do I get this out of selfie mode? And here we go! Say hello, Bradley. I don't think you guys can see him at all. Can you see him? Just a little bit of his head. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it is kind of, isn't it? I think it's because of the lights. Now we're moving different lights and things. Bradley, baby, they don't want to hear your little nails.
can't really read any of the signs when we're going by on the video. Okay guys, now I'm going to show you how we kick it in the south. This is even a little too southy redneck for me. But it's cute. It's kind of dark, so I'm really hoping you can make this out. 
when I make Gary stop for this one. Okay, do you guys see this? The snowman family is made from painted tires. Is that awesome or what? That's how we kick Christmas in the South. For those of you not from the U.S., please do not judge the entire United States by the select few. We've had a lot of wind, guys, so some of the decorations in some of the yards are flipped over. You see Joy's kind of off to the side. It got a little windy here overnight and this morning. I've noticed some of the blow-up decorations are laying over and things like that.
right guys that is it here's a little thing at the beginning of the neighborhood I am really sorry but it seems like the lights on everything really made things blurry you probably noticed at least I did on my end when we drove by things that weren't lit up you could actually see those well so that's bad but we tried and I hope you guys enjoyed it um, this is just a little welcome sign to the town it's really cute and the Christmas Lane sign here is there year-round all right I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas I will see you in my color and chat tomorrow well when I upload this video I'll probably attach them talk to you later guys peace love and happy coloring